Hi, I'm Laura Pereski Gould from Miami Color Theory, and this is Seeing Differently. Part 3 The Practice of Seeing. When I began shooting photos for Instagram, I started seeing my surroundings differently. I looked more, I noticed more. I started enjoying the simple beauty of a shadow, bright colors, and the patterns on buildings everywhere. Even when driving in traffic, I would marvel at the various colors and variety of shapes. This increased awareness has made my daily experiences more joyful and exciting and less stressful. Without realizing it, I was bringing a more mindful, contemplative approach to my photography. Mindfulness is an awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment non-judgmentally. Both mindfulness and meditation practices can provide increased happiness and well-being, enhance performance, and reduce stress, anxiety, depression, and pain. For me, mindful photography is meditation with my eyes open. There's a whole world of photographers who have also explored approaches to mindfulness and well-being, and they have called their practice by many names. While each of these approaches has nuances, they share many philosophies, including an overlapping set of these five main themes. Visual awareness, calming the mind, focused attention, process over product, and one moment in time. Visual awareness. What if we looked at our surroundings as if we had never seen them before? Visual awareness is going beyond casual looking, turning instead to actively seeing, maybe even seeking, paying attention through our eyes. We see automatically. The difference comes in seeing deliberately with both intention and attention. In contrast to the French expression déjà vu, which is the experience of new things looking oddly familiar, a photographer should strive for what comedian George Carlin calls vujade, that is, looking at familiar things with new eyes and a fresh perspective, creating that strange feeling that none of this has ever happened before. By practicing looking, observing, searching, the experience of seeing is heightened. Intriguing patterns, vibrant colors, and alluring shapes start jumping out on their own. Soon, it feels like a superpower. The Tibetan word miksong loosely translates to the good eye, which means seeing from a childlike mind, full of wonder, innocence, and curiosity, as if we are seeing things for the first time. Like mindfulness, the good eye means seeing from a beginner's mind, with no judgment. In a beginner's mind, we separate what we know from what we are seeing. We begin to see items as compelling shapes, textures, and colors, instead of as functional objects. Even the mundane and ordinary become extraordinarily beautiful. The true journey of discovery is not in finding new landscapes, but in having new eyes. Calming the mind. What if we could calm our minds any time, any place? Our fast-paced world can be stressful with social media and everyone multitasking. When we slow down and concentrate on whatever we're doing in the present moment, we are better able to engage with our surroundings. This takes practice. There's a grounding technique called 54321, which uses all five senses, sight, touch, sound, smell, and taste to anchor us to the present moment. This can be done anywhere. First, look at five things. A flag, a lifeguard station, a cloud, an ATV, even sand. Then touch four things. Listen to three things. Then smell two things. And taste one thing. This is a simple yet effective way for regaining control of the mind. The calming effects can be magical. Once our minds are grounded and calmed, we can immerse ourselves in the visual richness all around.
When you are mindful, you are fully alive. You are fully present. You can get in touch with the wonders of life that can nourish you and heal you. Focused attention. Attention is the act of concentrating on one or more surrounding elements that are experienced by the five senses. What if all our attention was focused on one visual element of form? Psychologist Ellen Langer says that mindfulness is the opposite of mindlessness. She defines mindfulness as the simple act of actively noticing things. Focused attention is actively noticing. In contemplative photography, there's a concept called a flash of perception, which means an element of form grabs the photographer's attention. Using perception instead of conception, in other words, staying with seeing instead of thinking, this intentional focus allows even the ordinary to really be seen. Many meditative practices focus on internal things like breath and mantras. In photography, the subject is the anchor. Attention is given to something external. It's a different kind of meditative practice. Even a drive through car wash can be breathtaking. The benefits of seeing can come only if you pause for a while to look again. Process over product. What if we valued the process as much as the product? In Zen photography, photographers engage in activities purely for the sake of doing them, rather than as a means to an end. The acts of scouting locations, seeing opportunities, or going on photography walks become at least as important as the photograph itself, connecting the photographer to their environment in new and exciting ways. Through Miami Color Theory shoots, I've discovered the work of local architects and local artists. I admire the murals in Wynwood, and I've learned about special events, unique experiences, and nearby communities. I've also become more aware of the time of day, the long shadows in the morning and late afternoon, and I'm more aware of the changes in the weather and what the sky looks like on colder days, even in Miami. As a consequence, I've discovered that the best time to shoot lifeguard stations on South Beach is in the late afternoon when the sun is behind me. And Ocean Drive Art Deco is best to shoot in the mornings. Seeing beauty becomes moments of joy. These photographs end up being souvenirs of an experience. After all, photography is not what's important. It's seeing. One moment in time. What if we treated each moment as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? What's here now? A photograph captures a fraction of a second, a moment in time. There is only one moment exactly like right now. Mindfulness is staying in the present moment. Photography is a way of celebrating that moment. Ichigo Ichie is a Japanese four-character proverb, which loosely translates to a once-in-a-lifetime encounter. It describes the concept of treasuring the unrepeatable nature of a moment. In a tea ceremony, no cup of tea can be exactly alike, even if you drink tea every day. Even if you walk your dog on the same path every morning, no walk is exactly the same. The convergence of the time of day, the weather, the angle of the sun, the light, the mood, the composition of objects, and the circumstances are unique and unrepeatable. The colors we see are never exactly the same. By taking the time to observe, a mindful photography practice allows us to honor and savor each moment. Photography is a way to capture the moment, this one moment out of all time, which comes once and is not repeated. By using a variety of these approaches, visual awareness, calming the mind, focused attention, process over product, and one moment in time, we begin to see beauty everywhere. Just like yoga is a practice, because it is an act of continuous improvement, so is the practice of seeing. 
And just as we train our muscles, we can train our eyes. Sometimes I think going out to photograph is a bit like going fishing. We never know what we're going to catch, and we're open to whatever we might encounter. It's exciting. We can savor each unique experience, which can bring us joy. I hope you enjoyed Seeing Differently Part 3, The Practice of Seeing. In case you missed the full series, come back to watch Part 1, Minimal Photography, and Part 2, The Art of Editing, iPhone Tips and Tricks.